So kind of, I guess, kind of turning to like the politics of this now, kind of as as we're seeing all this kind of change, like, are how many like clear red seats are there? How many clear blue seats are there? And, and did they create more purple seats? Are we going to see more competition here uh, in the coming years? And you know, seeing who is elected. Yeah. So in the last uh, 30 days, I've been trying to spend more time on my bike than think mm-hmm. about congressional districts. But I think I still remember these numbers. Um, so uh, the districts that came out really were probably pretty good for Democrats. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there are two districts in particular that Republicans basically had flipped into Democratic seats. Um, and that would be the Valadeo district in uh, the Central Valley. Um, that is, uh, you know, that it's a majority minority district that comes down into Bakersfield and goes north from there, not the McCarthy district. Mm-hmm. And then the Mike Garcia seat in that Santa Clarita one, the one I was talking about where like people are calling in and saying right. should be in and all that. Right. So the Republicans that organized that stuff, they lost. And that district is Democratic. So those should be two Democratic pickup opportunities. Those should happen in 2022. But if Republicans held on to them, they should happen in 2024. Mm. But those districts are kind of off the list of Republican seats, basically, from the metrics. We could talk forever about whether or not the metrics are good. There's also the Michelle Steele seat, which is this uh, little Saigon seat that goes up into Fullerton. And it is one that I literally drew the exact district um, in my prep. And it, it was a new idea for a district, but it was creating a more of an Asian opportunity to district. Mm-hmm. And uh, that district is on paper Democratic, but um, it'll be harder for Democrats to win that because they don't have like a great bench there. And so they're going to be, you know, they don't have like a sitting assembly member who can run for that. They don't mm-hmm. have a sitting state senator who's going to run for that. So it's, it's going to be a little more challenging. Um, also, the late census data, I call the late census data incumbent protection. Like it wasn't, that's not why they did the right. census late, but the late census data meant you had later redistricting, which means it's like, voila, you've got your lines and the person who's the incumbent has their campaign team, their fundraising, their their organization, their endorsements, their, their whatever, and they're ready to go. And some challenger, like they might have the best district in the world, but you know, they don't even have a campaign chair. They don't have a fundraiser. They don't have endorsements. They don't have whatever. And now all of a sudden you have 60 days before the, you know, filing deadline and you're like right. kind of screwed. So the Michelle Steele seat is one that's democratic. So that's basically, I'd say on paper, Republicans lost two and a half seats. Democrats lost one seat because they lost the Lowenthal seat. So net gain for Democrats, I think in the plan overall, which um, from all those ensembles wasn't really supposed to happen. Democrats were supposed to lose one. Interesting. So like, you know, you work in a lot of states, you you see kind of what goes on nationally. You know, I guess, is our model, you know, the best, you, you know, in, in the nation? Everything or? in California is the best. Um, we're the best at everything. Best weather. We're best at everything. <laughs> um, uh, I think the California process is the best process because it allows for a commission that has shown in these last two iterations to be high quality, you know, above reproach in terms of their kind of partisanship and that makeup. The the process, one of the things that some people might say they don't like about the, com- the commission process is that we don't have like a strict competitiveness criteria. Mm-hmm. In other states, you're supposed to look at like, is the number of seats that Democrats and Republicans gonna win proportional to their share of the votes in statewide elections? Um, we don't have that standard. We have like a partisan blindfold where they're not supposed to know or care about where the partisans are right. and just draw districts based on the rank criteria. Um, I like that process. Um, I like the fact that our commission is the final say and they implement the lines as opposed to a commission that's kind of like a suggestion and it goes to the legislature and then they get to haggle over it. Um, so this true independent commission process, I think, is definitely the best. Uh, Michigan did one this year um, that was basically the same process, a little different. Um, I am a little bit more skeptical of the outcome in Michigan because they did had some problems in drawing of the black districts, mm-hmm. um, VRA issues that I just didn't think were right. So um, uh, but then there's other states that have different versions of this. Uh, but that California model, I think, is the best. I, I would love for it to be the national yeah. model. There is a national bill that requires states to have commission, commissions. 
it would also have that competitiveness criteria language in it. I wish that it didn't, but um, having a commission structure nationally would be much, much, much better than these political footballs, you know? That's kind of interesting because, yeah, originally you think, oh, yeah, competitive, that'd be good, right? But if it doesn't really represent the, you know, the lo locale yeah. or the people, then what does it matter? It's kind of like one of those things where um, when you have, it's really, really harder than people would think. You need districts to all be whole pieces, mm -hmm. equal size, not violate the Voting Rights Act. And then as you start to tack on more criteria, it gets harder and harder to draw like perfect districts. And if you say like districts have to be competitive, that's great in a, in a sense, but you are going to end up subjugating the other criteria. So if you were to say the California map, like California map isn't quote unquote competitive, it's not proportional. Um, the California map, California elects Republicans or California voters vote on the Republican side of the ticket between 35 and 38 percent of the time, roughly, in the mm -hmm. last couple of statewide elections for, you know, Congress and governor and president and that kind of stuff. So Republicans should have 35 to 38 percent of the districts. Based on the way the lines are drawn now, they have like, depending on which house you're looking at and what metrics you're using, they have anywhere from 12 to 20 percent of the districts. So we would have to take our map and then now adjust it to right. wow. create more competitiveness. And how would you do that? Like you would take Democratic leaning Republican districts or Democratic leaning districts and like try to shove more suburban white voters in them. You know, like there'd be a lot of things you'd have to do to really distort this map to make it be a 35% mm -hmm. of Republicans getting elected. And in fact, it might be like a look like a Republican gerrymander to do it. So Competitiveness, just adding that additional additional criteria, it's going to end up subjugating the other criteria, yeah. and it's just, in my view, more harmful than good. Make sure you just click the button below and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with all our news and updates. Our